What's up YouTube and welcome to another Infinite Painter tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can create this cactus design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need to follow along with today's tutorial in the requirements section of the description down below. There you'll find the canvas size as well as a link to the palette image that you can see up here in the top left. I'll show you how to add that into Infinite Painter when we get started. As always make sure to tag me in your finished creations wherever you decide to post them and make sure to also check out the join button down below where you can now become a member of the channel and you can support the work that I do here. And not only do you support the work, you also get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time the longer you are a supporter. So you can flex that in the comments, but you also get early access to my tutorials as well. So make sure to check that out using the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and create a canvas size that's 2000 by 2000 and you can just set the background color to white just to get started. And once we create our canvas as per, we're going to go ahead and add in our canvas. So we're going to go up to the three dots. We're going to go to the option of import and then you're going to need to tap on the file that I've provided with the palette image. Once you do so, this menu is going to change. It's going to ask you, do you want to import it as a layer or a reference? We're going to tap on reference and it will add the image up here in the top left. So that is all of our colors for today's design. Now I can go ahead, for example, keep an eye on this color picker here. If I tap every single time I tap, it changes color. But if you don't have the equipment for that, you just need to go up to three dots, go to settings, go to the option here of gestures and go to long press and change it to the eyedropper. That will allow you then to hold down with your finger. It would create a little ring around it and then you can select the colors accordingly. So that's what you can do as a backup. And the next thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is add in a grid. So if we go to our actions, we're going to go to the option of create. We're going to go to perspective and grid. And then we're going to go ahead and drag this little dot here. If you don't have the knot, just tap here on the magnet symbol. So we'll just go ahead and drag that into the very bottom right corner, just so that you end up with a four by four grid. And then you can tap on the magnet when you're done. Now, what this will allow you to do is lay out your design against mine. It's just so you can scale things a little better and a bit more accurately compared to me. Now, if we go ahead and we grab this color here, the bottom of the second column, we're going to go ahead and go to our create options. We're going to go to fill and we're going to tap on the screen and hit the tick when we're done. So fill that in. We're then going to go ahead and create a new layer. And if we bring out our layers, we can pinch the two together and that creates a group. And if you want to, you can rename a group and you can just call it something like background. Hit rename. And then if we go ahead and we tap on this icon here to open it, we've now got a layer in there alongside the background. If we go ahead then and we create a new layer, but we drag it up and out of the background so it's not in that group. We're then going to go ahead and grab this color here, the top of the third column from the right. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. We're going to go ahead and just make sure our settings of our monoline smoothing set to run about sort of 60, just so we've got some nice smooth lines. We're going to go ahead and let's set our brush size to something maybe around about sort of the let's go a bit bigger than that let's go up to around about sort of the 40 point and all we want to do is just draw in some really basic hills it's going to swoop in from here it's going to come down to around about sort of this point here and then swoop up on the other side now it doesn't need to be as high as that so i'm just going to redo that one more time over here to the left hand side and then i'm going to go ahead and grab my create options we're going to go to tools and fill we're going to tap and drag to the right hand side just to get rid of the fluffy line there that sometimes appears and then hit the tick when you're done so you've got your hill in place you can now go ahead and go back down into the background group we can grab the bottom of the far right column here we're going to go to our brush we're going to go ahead and back out of that menu go back to the option of sprayers and we're going to go to the soft airbrush the trusty we're then going to go ahead and set our brush size to something nice and large round about sort of the 800 point you can see my settings here for the brush. Now I'm going to bring the opacity down to around about 80, but you can see the rest of my other settings. We're going to go ahead and on this layer, we're going to go around in a circular motion here, and we're just going to go ahead and build it out until we leave a little bit of a darker sort of color up in the top left corner and a little bit on the top of our sort of canvas there. So a little bit at the top and a little bit over here. Now, because we separated it, if you need to, you can always go to your eraser and use a soft airbrush and do the opposite, you know, bring back in that kind of curve here in the top left. So balance it out by jumping between the two and see which you need to sort of implement. But as long as you've got a basic area here with a slightly dark left corner and the top edge, you're good to go. Now you could do it on the same layer, but I'm not going to, I always create separate layers. So I've got more flexibility. So I'm gonna hit the plus icon to create a new layer. 
I'm going to grab the middle of the far right column and we're going to go ahead and introduce another brighter tone. So that's going to come from over here and then it's going to sort of build up and out over towards that darker tone and really sort of flush this out in this area nice and bright. So you end up with a lovely gradient. Now, of course, you could have used a gradient tool, but I like to be in control. I like to do things manually and also practice that. And then again, I'm going to create another new layer. Grab the top of the far right column and then just somewhat a little bit sort of behind the hills and a little bit in here. So a little bit towards the lower end of our sky back there. I'm just going to go ahead and just add in a little bit of this color here, blending that up and in. Now your sun's going to eventually sit here, but for now we just create that gradient. Now, if you need to, at this point, you can tap on a layer and merge it down and you can merge all of those layers of your background into one. It's totally up to you. I'm going to go up to this shape here that we created and create a new layer, tap on it and clip it to it. We're then going to go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of the third column from the right. And we're going to go left to right, continuing with our soft airbrush. And you see this bottom row here of our grid. We're just going to kind of merge just a little bit over the top of that and a little bit in towards that valley there. So you're creating like this little bit of a curve almost to it. You can see how it dips down slightly on the right. That will just show that the land kind of just rolls its way into that kind of valley there. And you can sort of bring that off a tiny bit. You don't have to sort of allow that to drop too low. And then on the same layer, we'll just go ahead and grab this color here, the bottom of the uh, third column from the right. And we'll just go along this edge down here, right close to us and just kind of darken up the land just a tiny bit like so. Then we're going to go ahead and create another new layer. It will clip itself automatically. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the bottom of the fourth column from the right. And then just in this kind of area here, we're going to go round in a circle. So I'm just going to get rid of my layers for a minute. So I'll swipe them out of the way. I'm going to go round in a circle and just try and add some bleeding highlight just over the top here of our hills and just color that in with a nice little bit of color on there. And then bring that down and kind of merge it in towards the land as well a tiny bit. Now that line there is looking a little bit too strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap on the shape here for it. We're then going to go ahead and go to our tools. We're going to go to the option of edit and we're going to go to the option of edit and filters. If we go to structure and blur down here, we just need to go ahead and add in a tiny amount of blur here because all we want to do is just blur the edge. We don't want to sort of destroy it too much. So something around about 30% looks pretty good up close. And zooming out, we do get a little bit more of a fuzzy edge to it. I think you could probably go a little bit more than that. I reckon around about 40 to 45% should do the trick. So let's do exactly that. Let's go around about sort of 42 and hit the tick when we're done. That blurs it out, it's further away. And now you can get the concept of depth a little bit more. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch these layers together. So I'm going to pinch these three for the hill together. I'm going to bring out that and I'm going to rename it. So let's go ahead and tap on the name up here. We'll call it hill. Just to again, keep things nice and organized. And then moving away from that, we're going to go ahead and add in some highlight on top. So we're going to go ahead and create another new layer. It will clip itself to this group weirdly. Just tap on it and unclip it. It's perfectly fine. And as I always say with Infinite Painter, it's always good sporadically throughout your design. Go up to the three dots and hit the option of save. And that makes life a lot easier for you and prevent any sort of additional crashes. Now we're going to tap on this layer. We're going to tap on its blend mode here. And we're going to change it to the option of linear dodge. Again, we're just going to triple check. We've got this color here, the bottom of the fourth column from the right. Again, if we take a look at the settings, you can still see them. And then what we're going to do in this area here, we're going to add in a lovely big bright spot. So let's move that out the way. I'm going to go ahead and go round in a circle and your colors will really start to punch out at this point. You're going to get a really beautiful glow. Go along this sort of hill line here a little bit as well. Really sort of bring that color in and just over the hill a smidge. And then we'll go ahead and create another new layer, tap on that and change that also. It's blend mode from normal to linear dodge. Let's go to our soft airbrush and bring it down to something much smaller, maybe something around about. Let's take a look at that. That's way too small. Let's go to something around about maybe say 200. No, yeah, that's not too bad. I'm going to drop it a little bit further. I'm going to go 160. It's not critical what the size is. All we want to do is just tap a few times and progressively build up a dot in the sky. So you may need to go ahead and sort of draw in a little circle like this. You've got a lovely beaming sun there. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and add in the ground texture before we carry on. So we're going to go into our layers. We're going to create a new layer at the very top. 
we're going to go to this color here, the bottom left of the palette. If we go to our brush, we're going to go into pens and we're going to use the old inker brush. I've got the size set to around about 20 pixels. I've got it set to 18 there and everything else is just default. Now, what we want to do is we want to create the pattern here that's going to run along the ground. It's just all the cracks in the ground. So you can draw in these kind of really wobbly horizontal lines and create all these sort of random avenues for where the cracks in the ground are really, really dry and create the texture that we're going to find here. Now, I don't want you to go any higher than the midway point because we're only going to draw half of it and then we're going to flip the design so that we can save ourselves a bit of time as well. So you can create little blocks like this or you can create those kind of more long exaggerated wobbly lines that kind of go edge to edge almost. So it's up to you what you want to do. Just make sure you're creating this nice random assortment of cracks in your ground there. So we'll just keep going, creating all of these random wobbly shapes, almost trying to sort of abide by a bit of a horizontal kind of aesthetic to it. So just making my way up towards that midpoint. Creating cracks after cracks, seeing what we can get away with. And then again, once we get really, really close to the middle, before you go over the middle line of your grid, on the layer, tap on it, duplicate it. Then go to your tools. If we go to edit, we go to basic transformation here. We're going to flip it horizontal and we're going to rotate it until it's upside down and then drag it into the top half of the design. Now at that point you can pick and choose, do you wanna flip it again horizontal? It's up to you, just decide what looks best for you. But I'm gonna hit the tick, and then I'm gonna tap on the top one and merge it down into the one underneath. And then all you have to do is just fill in the middle then. So that way you should get rid of a little bit of that sort of mirror aesthetic to it. As long as you kind of fill this in in the middle a little bit randomly, you will lose a lot of that flip. So sometimes it's really good to sort of save yourself some time and use the tools available to create something like this. Now, once you're done with your work, we can again go up to three dots and hit save, of course. Let's then go to our tools. Let's go to the option of edit. We're gonna to go to the option here of distort under transform. And you may need to zoom out of your canvas because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the top node in the middle down until it's sort of going to create our ground surface here. Now that's too flat at the minute, so we're going to grab the bottom right node down here. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to grab the bottom right node and drag that out. I'm going to grab the bottom left node and drag that out. I'm going to go a bit further this time because you do need to kind of stretch it out to create this kind of perspective aesthetic to it. So we're going to keep going. And you're kind of looking for this line in the middle here to be nice and straight. So see if you can kind of match up to that a little bit but as long as you've got something like this you're all good to go so let's go ahead and just drag that down a little bit more and hit the tick when we're done so now you should have a little bit more of a compressed look in the distance and a bit of a larger aesthetic a bit closer towards us we are then going to go ahead and grab our eraser we're going to tap on the eraser and use the option of sprayers and soft airbrush you can see my settings here I'm going to use the brush size of around about sort of 800 just to go left to right, left to right in the distance and just start to erase that down stroke after stroke. I might even go smaller than that around about 600 and bring the opacity up to about 76 and just blending that out. I'm then going to go round over here and kind of blend that out in the distance. We don't want too much detail too far away. And then down here in the bottom right, I'm going to just kind of blend that out and a little bit in the bottom left as well. So just trying to sort of blend it out in the edges. And then what we'll do is we'll also go to our edit. We're going to go to the option of filters. We're going to go all the way towards the bottom. We're going to use this one here of zoom. And that should give the sides of your design a bit of a crazy aesthetic. So if we just bring that down a little bit, we don't want to dial it up too much. We're essentially looking so that the edges get a little bit fuzzy, but not the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to around about 20% here. So around about 20, 18 will do and hit the tick when I'm done. And then you should have a little bit more of a blurring on the edges. So you've now done your ground texture. Let's go up to three dots and hit save. Let's then go ahead and draw in our cactus. So we're going to go ahead again and create a new layer. We are going to grab this color here, bottom left of the palette again. Your brush wants to be set to 
the option of calligraphy and we're going to go for the monoline brush size doesn't really matter now you'll be able to see my grid on the screen here i've just fixed it again so we're still going by four by four and we're looking to draw our cactus here in the second column and height wise it's going to run to around about there anyway so you can if you want to position a little dot just as a guide for you and then you're going into the bottom row and we're roughly going to around about sort of this point here so all you need to do is of course draw like a a curved sort of rectangular shape and you can go all the way down now try not to hold down too long otherwise you'll get a shape appear like that and it doesn't need to be perfect in any way shape or form it just needs to be a nice rounded shape like this and you do want a nice randomness to it i'm going to go to my create options and go to fill and i'm going to tap and drag to the right just to get rid and um, see i'm dragging it a couple of times just to get rid of that fuzzy line and hit the tick when i'm done now that's looking okay that's pre pretty good for me i'm going to go ahead though and create a new layer drag it underneath that shape so it's now underneath i'm going to go ahead and draw in our next layer which is going to sit a little arm here and it's going to run into the sort of cactus body around about here so you can just go ahead and just create like a bit of a swoop down and then a little bit of a curve up and in and you can make that a little bit sort of more top heavy if you wanted to so i could just go ahead and round that off a little bit more like so and then just sort of bring that into the body now you can just quickly fill that in as well and there you go you've got one of the arms and then we can go ahead and do another one on the opposite side but you want to make sure this one goes a little bit higher but also comes out of the body at a little bit of a higher point as well so we're going up and into here over the top go round tuck that back in and then link them together and then just quickly fill that in like so and now you've got your cactus now there's one more layer we need to create so we're going to create another one and drag it above in terms of the silhouette shape so it's right at the top of our layers now i'm going to bring the size of the brush down to something around about 15 just a little bit smaller and all I'm going to do is create a bit of a mound down here. So a bit of a bumpy shape, so a little bit of an earthy shape. You're going to run through the cactus and then let that come down on the opposite side, a little bit sort of longer on the right there. And then just creating a bit of a, a mound shape like this. Go back to your tools, go to fill and tap and drag to the right hand side just to fill that in and hit the tick when you're done. I just need to go ahead and sharpen up the point on the end there. And that looks pretty good. Now, at this point, we also then need to go ahead and start to rough up some of the edges. So we're going to go back to the main body. We're going to go back to our brush and go to the option of settings here for the brush and bring the smoothing all the way down. Let's bring it down to, say, 10. And then what we want to do is we want to set the brush to something again around about sort of maybe 30 points. And we're going to zoom in. And I want you just to go around the edge with a little bit of a wobble. We want this kind of aesthetic to it. So you may need to reduce the brush size. You may need to sort of adjust it for your needs but as long as you can create a really uneven edge i'm going to bring the brush size down myself down to around about 18 on this occasion just so i can quickly just run around the edges and just adjust the shape just making it a bit uneven because we want it to be natural we want it to have those lovely sort of randomness of life that we we get and it's never going to be a perfectly sort of shaped cactus it's always going to have the little bumps and lumps and little areas where it's going to jump out a little bit more let's keep going all the way down and then take a look at your cactus make sure you're happy with all the randomness to it and then repeat for the arms as well so we'll zoom in on the arms and we'll just again create all of these little random wobbles you can maybe sort of focus them a little bit more towards the top now i'm going a little bit quicker so don't worry about sort of the pacing of it if you are spending a little bit more time that's perfectly fine with all of my tutorials you can always slow them down there's a link in the description down below to a video where you can do exactly that you can always set me down to sort of half pace and follow along like that. Don't worry, I'm just trying to get through these little bumps and lumps. But it doesn't require a huge amount of focus, to be honest, or like requirements. It's just fairly straightforward. We're just trying to rough up those edges like so. Now, once we've done that, we can then go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to back out of that menu that we were previously in. We're going to go ahead and change our brush. We're going to go into the option of pens and we're going to use this option here, the tapered inker. Now, what this will allow us to do is we're still on the arms. It will allow you to create a line that has these two sharp points on either end. And of course, we're drawing a cactus. So what we're going to do is we're firstly going to go up to our three dots and hit save. 
and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to flick like this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my brush size. It's 20 and the settings are 100, 100 on flow. And I'm just drawing inside the body and then flicking this brush outwards to create little random varying weights of spikes. Now, what you'll see me do is I'm going to make my way up at this angle. So all I'm doing is keeping the same movement all the way up the cactus arm here. Just sort of bringing that round, trying to keep the angle the same. And then I'll rotate it and go down again, just flicking almost from left to right for me. And that's just a really natural bit of movement for me here. Let some sort of run out a little bit more vertically. You can let some sort of run out quite sort of pointing downwards. And then once we've gone ahead and completed one lap of the shape, we're going to go ahead and just adjust the angle. We're going to essentially do the opposite angle. So once I get down to here, I'm going to start back where I was, but I'm going to try and adjust the angle to sort of match a little bit in terms of uh, an easy movement. So I'm going to crisscross my spikes here almost. So a little something like this, and you can, again, work in varying amounts of sizes, varying angles, and all we want to make sure we're doing is we're creating that lovely spiky silhouette to our cactus. So we're just gonna run this all the way along, crisscrossing those. Eventually I'm sort of taking a look at it and thinking, hang on, can I run a line out a little bit more, sort of just straight out almost. You don't have to sort of run them too crisscrossy. You can have a few stick up and they will be viewable. So zoom out, take a look at the overall aesthetic, triple check that you're doing a good job and you're happy with the aesthetic. You may want to get in there and do some pretty large ones if you can, but nothing too heavy in terms of the spikes themselves. That one's probably at the limit, if I'm honest. And then again, we're going to sort of do the opposite motion to all of this area here. So just like we did on the opposite side, I'm just running some additional crisscrosses. And you're going to need to do that for both the arms and the body. So we're taking a look at this. Now, I don't typically in my tutorials skip ahead. Only in very random occasions. So we're just gonna do this together quickly. Just gonna make our way all the way around, spiking up our cactus. So taking a look at that, that's got a lovely, lovely silhouette to it. And then I just need to match it up on this side as well. I'm gonna leave the very bottom edge of this arm. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of focus my spikes a little bit towards the top edge almost. That one's probably a little bit too heavy. We don't wanna do things unnecessarily large here. You know, you want to have that lovely uniformed kind of aesthetic to the spikes, but don't want to have any sort of outliers that are a little bit too obvious that that might have been a mistake potentially. So just try and factor that in, in your own work. And then again, we're just going to keep going all the way across, create all those lovely crisscrosses. When you get like a lovely crisscross like these, that looks so realistic and matches up nicely, but you don't need to focus on that too much. You don't need to sort of sit there and work that into your design over and over again. And you do need some outliers in a sense that are pointing upwards and outwards and a little bit unique in their direction, just for the, again, that randomness of life and the randomness of the design. Try not to overdo it as well. Try not to make them too dense. It's better to make it a little bit less dense with all the spikes than make overdo it and have to go backwards. So just take a look at your design, triple check that you're happy with it. That looks pretty cool to me. I'm going to go back to the main body of my cactus and just repeat exactly the same steps. I'm going to run some spikes up and out of my main body here. I'm taking a look at the opposite sides and the arms and I'm thinking, hang on, they might be a little bit too dense or just on the, the leaning onto that side. So I'll learn that from that for the main body here and try not to sort of create too much dense spikage here. I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to try and leave some additional gaps here and there. We do want to have the spikes, so we do need to make sure that they are present. It's a nice little balance. So I'm just going in the same direction, that kind of bottom left to top right kind of diagonal line is really comfortable for me at this angle. And then we take a look at that and then we do the opposite, don't we? We go the opposite way. So Let's try and rotate it in a way where I can just flick up. So if, if you can rotate your canvas, that's the best thing about sort of these digital art based apps is you can rotate your canvas that just makes life so much easier. And you can just, especially if you've got a continuous motion, having the right angle can just make things so much more comfortable. Sometimes if it's not quite going right, sometimes it can literally just be the angle that you're drawing at. 
and you may be just getting a particular sort of aesthetic to your design that you don't quite like. And again, rotate it, see what happens. See when you rotate, can you get something a little bit more sort of uh, natural with your movement that looks a little bit along the lines of what you're looking for. Now I'm just zooming in and out just a couple of times there just to triple check again, the overall sort of silhouette, making sure that we're happy with how many sort of spikes we've got on here. Going up and down these edges. Creating our lovely silhouette. Now the best thing is you can always come back to those spikes. So once you're done and you've got a lovely little sort of design going on, you can always go back. So I'm just going to go around a couple more times, adding in some additional ones where I think it's necessary just for the density. And also occasionally a couple of random larger ones here and there. Now that's looking really good. I'm also going to go ahead and go down to the mound on the ground here. And we're going to go ahead and create blades of grass. So you may want to go ahead and just sort of round off. You can slow your sort of um, movement down a little bit and create some very small areas of grass. So I'm just gonna sort of really rough up this edge, just trying to get rid of that monoline aesthetic to it a little bit more and create lots and lots of small, you can hear me probably tapping away, lots of small little blades here, just to again, break down that sort of very solid monoline brush, leave gaps. You don't have to fill in absolutely everything on that edge. You can leave a couple of gaps. So you've got like a little bit of a, a bold spot there. And then on the rear, we'll also go ahead and add in some blades here too. Different angles will look great. Again, if you can sort of curve them, you know, allowing gravity to take its sort of um, weight over the top edge of it and let it just fall down on itself. Lovely stuff. And then that should be just enough just to sort of give ourselves some nice vegetation. Now at this point, you can go ahead and turn off your grid if you want. You can tap that icon there or you can tap this one icon here just to fully get rid of it. So we've now got the main silhouettes. Let's go ahead and add in some of the basic colors to these shapes. Now I typically, again, go ahead and create a new layer. I tap on it and clipping mask it just for maximum flexibility. If you need to and you're running out of layers, tap on the layer and go to the option of lock. You're just painting directly within the shape that you've locked. But I am on a clipped layer. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of the second column. I'm going to go to my brush, we're going to go back to sprayers and we're going to use the soft airbrush. So we're going to zoom in, we're going to go ahead and make sure our brush size is something manageable, about 600. That's probably a bit too big if I'm honest. Let's go around about sort of 430 and I'm going to just add in a little bit of brown down this right hand side and down the body of my cactus, leaving the bottom area and this left edge nice and dark. So some basic colouring on there. We're then going to go ahead and grab the bottom of the second column and I am going to do it on the same layer. That's perfectly fine. This green tone is going to go over the top and we're going to focus that a bit more towards that right hand side, allowing the brown to still exist. So we've got the green into the brown and then into the dark tone. Now you may need to go ahead and grab that layer, for example, and go to edit basic transformation, just move the color across a tiny bit if you've not maybe added in enough. I'm going to hit the tick. I'm going to grab my eraser on this occasion, just sort of blend out the very bottom edge. I'm using the soft airbrush under airbrushing again for my eraser and just sort of blending out the bottom so it runs into the silhouette. And if we go ahead and go back to our brush, we go back to this color here, the top or uh, sorry, the bottom of this third column. We're going to add in a little bit on this top edge of that color. So just a little bit up there on that top edge. Now we need to go ahead and repeat that for the arms. So we'll create a new layer, tap on it. We'll go ahead and clip it. We're going to go to our middle of our second column there. The brush, we're going to go ahead and use the soft airbrush still. So a bit of brown on this top edge. Leave this sort of area here of the arms. We don't want to add any color there. It's just more so on the top edge. So a little bit on there and a little bit, of course, down the right side here and over that top edge. Again, leaving it where it connects. We will get rid of this area here and make a bit of a shadow in a moment. We're going to grab the bottom of the second column now, the green tone. I'm going to bring the brush size down to around about sort of 300 and I'm going to add in some green on the top edge, blend it down into the brown, same sort of principles. We're trying to have a green into brown into the dark tone and then a bit of green over there as well. And that's all we'll do on this one. Then what we'll do is we'll create another new layer. So I'm still clipped to the arms over here. You can see this layer is clipped to the arms. I'm going to tap on this layer and change its blend mode from normal to the option of linear dodge. 
we're going to grab our sun color here, the bottom of the fourth column. Your brush wants to be a lot, lot smaller now, so probably around about 100 if that's something you're comfortable with, because what we want to do is we want to go around the side here. We're going to make our way down and we're going to slowly try and brighten up that edge, but keeping it more so on the edge. Now you can see I'm going back over myself and going right up against the edge. You can see I'm barely drawing within the actual shape itself. So I may want to reduce my brush size in a moment. I'm just bringing that brush size down to around about maybe 60% now, or 60 pixels. Just trying to brighten up that far right side. Lovely stuff. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to try and bring these spikes out. So for example, when we go down here, when they've got a bit more contrast, they nicely sort of step out a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll create another new layer and repeat, we'll tap on it, change its blend mode from normal to the option of linear dodge. And then we'll go over that again. And hopefully now you'll get this, this beautiful bright aesthetic where even on the bright sky in the background, your spikes should now start to really bounce, really pop. And we should be able to work them out. So we're going to go down this edge. And then as the lighting wraps around, you kind of want to let it just sort of die out. You can sort of add in a very sort of slim amount to the bottom on both layers. So I've just changed to the bottom layer again, just adding a slim amount in there. And now you should have this beautiful bright aesthetic. Now, making sure you're on the bottom linear dodge layer, we just repeat it over here as well, except I'm gonna keep this one a little bit skinnier. I'm not gonna add in quite as much of a highlight. So again, top edge and then round the right, but I'm gonna let it sort of die out a little bit quicker as if maybe the cactus here on the right, the main body is blocking the lighting. So just some nice natural sort of variation. I've done my first coat. I go back up to the layer above with our additional layer where we can now bring out those spikes, let them really shine, and then go up and around that top edge. So just a little bit on that sort of top edge in comparison to this side. Then we repeat this for the main body. So we go ahead and go up to here where the clip layer is to the main body and create another new layer. Tap on it. Change its blend mode from normal to the option of linear dodge. And then we're going to do our first coat. Let's go ahead though and hit the three dots and save as always. Let's try and make the app run a little bit better. And we're gonna go ahead and add in our brightest spots. I'm gonna bring the brush size up now because we've got a larger area, I've gone up to 130. I'm gonna go around the top edge. I'm gonna bring that down. I am not gonna bring any highlight into here though. I want that to block and there'd be a bit of a darker patch. So I'm gonna allow sort of the spikes and the brightness to kind of sort of come to an end around about there. And the bottom ones can be silhouette as well. So I'm just gonna bring that lighting up and around this top edge a bit more, around there. And then again, we'll create another new layer, tap on it and change its blend mode to the option of linear dodge. And then we can, again, make those spikes really pop right up against the edge and really sort of bring them out, make them nice and bright, nice and spiky. And there you go, you've got some nice highlights going on on there. Now what we'll do is, if you want to, you're more than welcome to merge those layers together if you want to save your layers. So merge them all into one, merge those all into one, that's totally up to you. Because now we're going to move on to the details that sit on top. So we're going to create a new layer, tap on it and turn off the clip. We're going to go ahead and go to our colours and grab the top here of the fourth column. We're going to go back to our brush, we're going to change it to the option of pens and the old inker brush again. And now we're gonna create sort of the spines that run up and down our cactus. So what you wanna do is we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna go ahead and draw from the very top, we're gonna to create a bit of a curved edge to it. So I'm just gonna create like a bit of a curving line here, bringing it down, kind of mimicking. If you end up creating any creases or wobbles, that's fine. And then just beside it, you wanna go ahead and create another one with a sort of parallel gap all the way down where possible, all the way down. And then the gap that you created here needs to slowly start to get a bit sort of tighter. So the gap's gonna slowly get a little bit more narrow, which shows it sort of rounding round over to the left-hand side. Now I'm gonna bring the brush size down. I'm gonna bring that down to 12 now. Go down once again, but I'm gonna again, make sure that the gap gets a little bit closer to the previous line. Now try not to force in another line. If you've run out of space, you've run out of space, that's perfectly fine. So I've managed to fit four in there. And then I can go ahead and make my brush eyes back up to maybe something around about sort of uh, 18 or 17. 
and you kind of want to mirror that. You could flip it, but we want to draw this in. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the gap in the very middle now is the widest gap. That is our widest gap because that's facing right at us. If we then go ahead and create another one, we're looking at the gap over on the left hand side and just slowly trying to see if we can make that a little bit more narrow as it makes its way down the cactus to try to make sure our gap gets a little bit thinner. I'm going to bring the brush size down to about sort of 10 pixels now and create one more if possible in this little gap right down here like so. Now there are all the main sort of spines. Now we can go ahead and repeat that for the arms but we'll do that in a second because we're then going to go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to go up a brush to the tapered inker again and you're going to want to go ahead, you guessed it, and create lots and lots of spikes running up and down here. So you can create some upwards, you can create some downwards. Again, what I recommend you do is, is just sort of start towards the bottom, sort of get up to a sort of similar point, and then just do the next line. So it's whatever you want to do to try and save time, but just creating all these little spikes that are going to sit on here. And as they get over towards the left-hand side, you only kind of want to shoot them off on the left-hand side. So the ones at the very front, you can see both sides of the spine. And then when they get over to the left, you kind of only want to show a few little spikes running off to the left-hand side more so. So on the left-hand side of those lines. You flip that on its head when you get over to this side, of course. You only sort of somewhat add the spikes to the right-hand side. So we're adding some like this, adding some on this line here. And again, you kind of want that crisscross. You don't want them sort of all pointing upwards. So you do need to sort of run in a few that are going to run a little bit down. So you just kind of want to randomly sort of dash those in. And let's just create as many as we think is necessary. So you may need to sort of really spend some time here detailing this. So we're just going to run all the way up to the top, come down. I'm going to try and sort of add in those varying spikes as well. So a couple pointing upwards, a couple more pointing down. You just got to keep going and fill these in. So sometimes you do have to sort of spend a little bit of time, as I mentioned, on the out, outer edges, you know, purposely spending some time to add in some details. So we're going to keep going and keep filling this in. Apologies if there's any sort of background noise, there's some sort of work happening outside. So you may be able to hear a bit of a rumble. So we'll just carry on anyway. I think it's too distracting. And it's also out of my control as well. So we'll just keep going. And in all the spikes, you can see all of these spikes. And if you do a good job of this, you actually spend the time to make sure that this looks correct and you're happy with it. It will be really apparent because you'll be able to see all of these little spines in a minute when we start to add further colors. So, you know, spend as much time as you can. Just making sure that it's detailed enough and it's got all of the aesthetic that matches up to the rest of the design. Crisscrossing them. Some of them might be a little bit tricky to see, I can appreciate, especially up here in these sort of double muted tones, but they will be expressed shortly. And you can always go ahead and adjust this afterwards. The way I'll lay out the layers for you means that afterwards, if you feel like you could maybe do with some more spikes here and there, you have the freedom to do so. We're just going to run up these spines here. Now, just remember that you are not clipped to the layer. So try not to run any really dark ones like, like that, for example. We don't want to run too many too far away from the body. I'm going to create some up here. I'm going to make sure I create some ascending, descending, should I say, spikes here. So the ones pointing downwards. Making sure we've got a nice variety in those. These ones are all pointing out to the right. That's great. Lovely stuff. And then I've got a couple more up and down there. So that's looking awesome. I think we've got some good detail in there. I think at the top here, I've got a bit of a sort of wide area towards the top. So I think I've got a little bit more space to play with. So I could address that by just adding in a few more sort of spikes here and there. Just seeing what we can do again. I can always come back and fix it afterwards if I want to add in a few more spikes here and there. So just take a look, see what we can do. See if we can add some more in. And that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Now let's just quickly repeat that process for the arms as well. So we're going to go down to where the arms are. We're going to create a new layer in front and tap on it and turn off the clip if it clips itself. Again, we're going to go back to our brush and change it back to the old Inca brush underneath. We will keep the size at around about sort of 10 to 12 on this occasion, simply because we're working in such a smaller area. We can go ahead and just be in a little bit more control of our lines. 
So we're going to look at this arm here. We're going to do exactly the same. We're going to sort of create the initial curve here. I just want to make sure that on the top edge that looks nice and neat. And come down and we just curve it round and into the body here. And then again, we create a, a second one just beside it with a very sort of parallel sort of line all the way down. You can let that just run into itself if you wish. And then we'll create another one coming down this line here and create that little flick off there. I'm going to create another curve for the middle. So on the opposite side now, on the right hand side, that's going to run round on itself like that. I'm going to create another one. Very, very parallel all the way down. And then I'm going to reduce the brush size down just a little bit down to about an 8.4 here, just so I can get a nice thin one in this gap here. And run that down. Now, down here, let's just quickly go ahead and grab our eraser. It should still be the soft airbrush under sprayers. I'm going to bring that size right down to around about sort of 100 and all I want to do is kind of blend this out in here and at the bottom because I don't want you to spend some time in here on an area that we're not going to add any detail to. So I'm going to undo that for a second because that was a little bit too heavy. I'm going to go over it a few times and on the underside just kind of break those lines down a little bit more so they run into a shadow. On the same layer, if we go back to our brush, we need to do the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and create again a similar line. I'm just going to create the the line with the smaller size, that's perfectly fine. It would just make this side a little bit more sort of varied compared to the one on the right hand side. And I've gone with some fairly large gaps there, straight off the bat, straight into then a thinner one. So this one then does have a, a very different aesthetic to it. And that's something that you really want to kind of add into your work if possible. And if you're drawing trees, for example, try and have the nice variation in them, make them look a little bit different from its partner right beside it. Again, we're going to grab our eraser and just kind of just fade out the bottom here and blend out the join here into the body. Lovely stuff. And then on those, we again need to go back to our brush. We'll first of all go to the three dots and hit save. But we'll go back to our brush. We will change the brush again to the tapered inker. And again, we're going to repeat adding the spikes. On this occasion, I'm going to skip ahead because this is just straightforward. It's exactly the same principles. So you'll see mine in a couple of moments. So I've gone ahead and added all my little spikes to both sides. So we're all at the same point now. And at this point, we can then start to color these actually in as well. So we'll first of all, we'll just simply tap on the arms here. We'll go to the option of alpha lock, which means we can't paint outside of the lines we've already created. If we then go ahead and we start to add in a few different tones, we can grab the orange at the very bottom of the fifth column. Let's go back to our brush and go to the option of sprayers. And we're going to grab the soft airbrush. Size wants to be made a little bit larger again, maybe up to around about sort of 300 looks a little bit large. Let's get to about sort of 250 ish. So once we've got a size that we're happy with around about 250, I'm going to go ahead and just bring in a bit of this orange down here. You can really see how we bring out the spikes, but we want it to sort of again abide by the lighting a little bit. So we want it to sit mainly on the right hand side. That's probably a little bit too much, but we'll, we'll work on it in a second. Let's go ahead and add in a bit of orange on here too on that right side. And I tell you what, while we're working with the same colors, let's do the same on the top main body here. We'll tap on it and we will go to the option of alpha lock so we can't paint outside of it. And again, we will go ahead and introduce these sort of brighter tones down this right hand side more so. So a little bit of orange to start with. You really bring out all of that detail. Let's then go ahead and grab the green above it. So the middle of the fifth column. And we're working in the middle of the body here. So we'll just carry on as we are. Now the green wants to be more dominant than that orange. So we want to kind of blend this beautiful green up in the top right edge so that you end up with these kind of very minimal gradients here between the two sides, because to me, the green looks the best. So we're just kind of blending that on top and then creating sort of a random sort of gradients here and there. If we go back to the little arms, they're already can paint the green over the top right edges, blending it in towards those orange tones. And you may lose quite a lot of it and that's perfectly fine. You know, sometimes it's a matter of just laying down the foundations and maybe making adjustments as you go. And then the next color is the top of the fifth column. We're still on the arms. We're gonna go ahead and add in that to the right hand side as much as possible, trying not to drag it into the body too much. So I'm gonna undo all of that because I'm gonna bring the brush size down to around about 150 now and just add it down that sort of far right stripe of the, the detailed spikes that we created. So again, over the top, down the far right side here, 
and there we go. Then I'm also gonna go ahead and go back to the body. We're gonna repeat that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go around the top edge, down that kind of far right spike spine there that we created and just showing that the lighting's wrapping around a little bit. Now what we're also gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer, tap on it and clip it to the main body lines here. We're gonna tap on it and change it to the option of its blend mode from normal to the option of linear dodge. We're gonna grab the sun color at the bottom of the fourth column. And again, we are gonna just lightly go around that very far right edge, that far right spine and just wrap the lighting around a little bit. So we're gonna bring it down only a tiny bit. You can see I'm pretty much only doing the far right spine there and that's it. We'll do the same for the arms. So you go down to the arms and the details that you added on top, create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. And then tap on the layer and change the blend mode from normal to linear dodge as well. And again, we're just gonna brighten up that far right edge only, adding in a bit of a highlight like so. And then again, a tiny bit up there and that looks really good. I'm just gonna leave that sort of top corner there a little bit brighter. And now we've got some lovely lighting on there. Now what we're also gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna grab the main shape. So I've got the main lines here. I'm gonna tap on it and duplicate it. Now it's important that you go to the bottom one out of the two. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the bottom left of the palette. We're gonna to go to our brush and make it massive. And we are gonna make sure the opacity is set to 100 because we're just gonna simply color in the entirety of that middle body. So just go over it a few times just to triple check. Here, we're then gonna tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. So we've filled it in with the dark tone and then we've turned off the alpha lock. If we go to our options, we go to edit, we go to basic transform and we zoom in on our cactus. We're gonna move this layer off to the left. Immediately, you will start to create a bit of a drop shadow. Now, I've not only moved it to the left, I've also moved it down as well. So we get a bit of a shadow at the top. So we wanna move it enough that we get a little bit of a sort of raised edge of our textures here, of our spikes. So if I tap the tick now, I've moved it off and down to the bottom left a little bit. If I go back to my edit options, we go to filters, we go to structure and blur. Once you've selected that, we're gonna bring the opacity, or the down, the percentage down, shall I say, sorry, down to around about 20% and hit the tick when you're done. And now you should have this wonderful bit of depth now. It should bring your spikes out even more. And repeat that for the arms. So we get down to the arms. We tap on it and we duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two. Go to your brush. It should still be the massive soft airbrush and you should be able to just color them in. Go over them a few times just to triple check. Again, making sure you're on the bottom one out of the two. And then when you're on there, tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. Go to your options, go to edit. Basic transform and just move that off to the left hand side a tiny bit. Only a little bit. You don't want to exceed the actual shape and hit the tick when you're done. Then go to your edit option, so edit, filters, structure and blur. And again, you wanna make sure that you just add in like a roundabout sort of a 20% there of the Gaussian blur or the blur there and hit the tick when you're done. And then you should have this wonderful amount of texture. Now, the only thing I need to do is just make some random adjustments to the shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to this layer here. So it's the main colored area. So it's the layer that the lighting is clipped to. If you tap on this and you add a mask to it, it now means that what you paint on the mask in black, so make sure your color is set to black in the bottom right, is now gonna be hidden. So what we can do is we can just lightly, I've still got the soft airbrush selected at a very large 600 size, and just blending out the bottom left and the very bottom edge. Now you kind of wanna bring your opacity down in my opinion, down to around about 70% and build up a nice blend. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set the size a little bit smaller now to around about sort of the 150 mark because I also want to add in a bit of a shadow behind this arm as we mentioned so I want to sort of take away that little bit of lighting in there and just kind of darken that up behind there so we're taking away the lighting from the spines I also want to go ahead and just make sure that that left edge is a little bit dark and we kind of just blend that out just so the bottom left edge of our cactus is nice and dark and the lighting only wraps at the top right likewise you can then go ahead and go to the lines here on your arms tap on them we can go ahead and mask them too. And we can just, for example, just darken up, say this edge here. You can take away the lighting a little bit more like that, create a lovely dynamic looking image. And again, down here, we'll just mask that out a little bit, maybe a little bit in there too, 
just to focus the lighting on the areas that are really visible to the sun. So your cactus has this wicked texture to it. Let's go ahead and hit the three dots and save. Now we're done with the cactus itself. So if you want to, all of these layers that we created, we've got the arms here. I can simply go ahead and pinch all of those into a folder if I wish. I can pinch them into a group. You can see if I turn this on and off, it's just the arms. And likewise, I can go ahead and pinch the cactus body into a group as well. And you can see that's there. That's only if you want to tidy things up. We're quickly going to go to the mound here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and we'll tap on the layer and we will alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. We're going to keep our soft airbrush around about sort of the 60 points. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here in the top left of the palette. And zooming in, I'm going to lightly just go over this edge, really, really light and kind of just blend the lighting round a little bit, creating some sort of random texture. You see how I've left a dark divot there and then it's a little bit sort of more colorful there. That just sort of makes things look a little bit more interesting. Just random sort of shapes here can just allude to the fact that the, the structure and the shape of that object isn't perfect. So I'm just going to brighten up the very top edge a little bit more, but ultimately leave it nice and sort of dark in behind. Now, what we will do is we will create another new layer. We'll tap on it and clip it to the mound. And the new layer, we will tap on it and change it from normal to the option of linear dodge. Again, we'll grab our sun. We're going to zoom in and we're going to just brighten up a few of those blades of grass. So you can see every time I sort of catch a few of them, we're just going to really bring them out, put the light right on them, and that's fine. Just a little bit of lighting like this. We can then zoom in on the left hand side and just add in a little bit on the top edge of these. Don't do all of them on the left hand side, maybe leave that side a little bit sort of less in the light. And then because we've got all of this lighting, we also need to introduce a shadow. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and add in a shadow to that. So we're going to go and create a new layer. We'll drag it underneath the mound and it will clip itself somewhere randomly. Just tap on it and unclip it. So it's a new layer underneath the mound. We'll go ahead and we'll grab the color in the bottom left of the palette. We've got the soft airbrush still. And you're looking at where your sun is. Now imagine if you drew a line straight through here. That's the angle of the sun. That's where it hits the base of my cactus. So ultimately my shadow needs to sort of run in this area here to align to the sun correctly. Now you can take exaggerated sort of measures here and there. So I can make that a little bit larger in size, the brush now up to around about, let's go to, let's go around sort of 200. I'm going to just create a very light streak to start with. And if you don't have pressure sensitivity, just again, bring your opacity down, start to take full control of your movements and what you're actually adding to the canvas. I'm going to sort of stretch that out a little bit over to the right and kind of just blend out the edges just to create a bit more of a fuzzy look to the shadow. I'm going to just bring that down and then let's just make sure that the very center of that area there is nice and dark as it makes its way off to the left. Now, not too many sort of strokes there, just enough to you end up with that shadowy tone. And I can go ahead now and also sort of just create a bit more of a blend around the base where the mound is sort of darkening up the ground a bit more. And then maybe some sort of random other little line here just to maybe allude to that. And likewise, a little bit over there as well to allude to the arms here on either side. So trying to give a vague silhouette there. Now what we'll do is we'll also bring that brush size down to around about sort of 100. We're going to zoom in and we're just going to sort of lightly just sort of blend out underneath our mound here just to add in a bit of darkness around the base. Now don't worry if you don't add enough here because what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the base here. We are going to tap on it and we're going to again add a mask to it. We're going to make sure our brush is set to a little bit of a smaller size around about sort of 60%. We're just going to blend out the edge now. So you're essentially erasing but you're just kind of blending it out just softening it out into the ground you'll get rid of this really sort of solid shape at the very bottom edge anyway and then once you've sort of got rid of the corners that should be enough you may need to go ahead and just lightly sort of feather out the edge of the mound a tiny bit it's totally dependent on sort of your shadows so as long as you've got the illusion there of the shadow that's fine and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back down to our shadow and we're just going to triple check if we make our brush size around about sort of 100 that none of the shadow has bled above so we need to go to our eraser tap on the eraser again still using the soft airbrush again around about sort of 100 points just erase here just to make sure that there's no shadow over the banking on the top edge so it's here on either side of our mound that's fine if shadow sits on the bottom edge but we don't want any shadow rolling around onto the opposite side we want to make sure that that shadow only sits on this left side. 
if we go ahead and we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram or come and share them with me on Facebook. Now let me know in the comments down below what you thought of today's design and of course drop a like while you're down there. And if you want to support the channel and the work that I do here, you can now become a member of the channel. You get a loyalty badge beside your name, early access to my tutorials, as well as sneak peeks and as well as potentially some future exclusive tutorials. So make sure to go ahead and hit the join button down below and become a member of the channel and again support the work that I do here. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.